So you've been thinking about podcasting, but you're wondering, is it too late to start a podcast? Like, is it really just oversaturated? I get that question a lot because I've been hosting a podcast for six seasons, 350 or so thousand downloads later, but I started at an earlier time where, where maybe I uh, had an advantage. So I wanna talk to you in this episode because I get this question a lot. Is it too late to start a podcast? And if you did wanna start a podcast, where would you even start? Hey, my name is Joanna LaFleur and this is Word Made Digital Tutorials and also the Word Made Digital Podcast is something I host and I hope in this tutorial and others like it that you're gonna find on this channel that we offer you practical, actionable advice for you as a church leader, a church communicator, a church creative in order to serve your community better, to reach people with the good news, the best news in the world of Jesus. These are only made possible by Compassion Canada and the Canadian Bible Society. This tutorial is brought to you by them. So thank you so much to them for making this possible. Podcasting in 2021 or 2022, you know, audio is everywhere. We love listening to things in our ears, our AirPods, our wireless headphones. Most people are listening to something or other all day and podcasts have become huge. They've exploded and people are listening to them everywhere. You probably have a few favorite podcasts and um, definitely the people of your church community have favorite podcasts that they listen to. And so you might be wondering if you're thinking about podcasting, is it really too late? Because it feels maybe like the market is oversaturated. So I wanna offer you some insight and some real data on this to start with today. Out of the 2 million titles reflected in Apple Podcasts and similar results in other podcast platform indexes, a remarkable 26% have produced just a single episode. Only 36% or 720,000 podcasts have more than 10 episodes. Only 720,000 podcasts have more than 10 episodes. What does this actually mean? Well, it means that the market is actually far less saturated than you think. 2021 is a great time to start a podcast. Is it too late to start a podcast? There's another thing you might be wondering, is it kind of too late if you kind of miss the boat? And that is actually with compassion and child sponsorship. You've probably heard about child sponsorship. Uh, if you're in church world, you've heard about it before and maybe you've heard about compassion and what they do uniquely. It's quite innovative, but you maybe haven't had the opportunity to actually do it for yourself. I want you to check out compassion.ca slash good. There's all kinds of ways that you can get involved in doing good in the world and child sponsorship as I have found in my life is a way to do that. It's not too late to get involved. Even if you've thought about it and you've heard about it for years, it's not too late. So check out compassion.ca slash good. The link's down in the show notes. All right, let's get back to talking about podcasts. So you want to start a podcast, but uh, where do you even start? It can feel overwhelming. I remember when I was starting podcasting, there was a lot that felt intimidating about the process. There was a lot to learn, but I think once you get going, most people will say that starting was actually the easy part. And what we see by these stats that 26% of the podcasts out there don't get past one episode, uh, it's because continuing is actually really, really hard. And so I wanna offer you some tips to get started, but maybe in a future tutorial or future training, I wanna offer you how to continue at podcasting consistently over time in a sustainable way. So starting is easy, continuing is the hard part, but you can get a platform to record right on your computer. You can record a podcast now in the audio apps on your iPad, on your phone, phone, every computer and you know tablet these days has an audio capturing uh, app. And so there you don't need to worry about that. That's basically a, a free cost of entry. You don't have to worry GarageBand or other things like it. You can record a podcast. Now, if you're thinking about having guests on your podcast, that's where things start to get a little bit more complicated and you might want to start thinking about paying for a platform. On um, a platform to record like Zoom, Zoom is an obvious one because you can actually record the whole Zoom conversation if you're interviewing somebody. But what I would recommend if you use Zoom is make sure to record the different people who are on the podcast as separate audio files. So that means 
if a dog's barking in the background on your end or there's some interruption or the internet cuts out on somebody else's end, you actually would get separate audio files from them. Now what I use for recording my podcast is something called riverside.fm. It's specifically designed for podcasting and I do recommend it. I'll, I'll post a link below if you wanna check it out. I love it because it produces really, really high quality video and audio and it as, as it can do now in Zoom, you can have separate files for each guest, but it also has a feature where if somebody's internet cuts out or even if their whole computer shut down uh, and had to restart, you wouldn't lose any of the files. That's the beauty of something like Riverside.fm. It's thinking about the podcaster. You can have guests, you can have call-ins, you can do some advanced features in there through editing and you don't need to necessarily use them all, but something like Zoom or Riverside FM are a great place to start. Now those start to then add a little bit of a cost to your podcast, but I think it's worth it if you want to do guest interviews. Let's talk about mics. It's one of the big questions I get asked all the time. If you're doing a podcast, which mic should you use? Well, I'll never forget the time that I was in Europe with some family and a family member of mine has a a really successful real estate podcast. And uh, this person was, it was recording on their headphones into their iPhone through the little headphone mic, a podcast that was about to be released from his phone out into the world the next day. And I was fascinated by that. And basically he said, it's much more about the content than it is about the quality. And so you can always improve the quality of your audio. Of course, if people can't hear you or it's all garbled and hard to understand, that's not gonna work. But if you have a minimum viable product, then you can go and have your podcast out there. So don't be held up by the microphones and the tech. But if you're going to buy a mic, the two that I would recommend, the, the starter mic, the entry level mic, I would say is the Blue Yeti USB mic. You plug it right into your computer. It's one that even I was interviewing someone who has millions of downloads on their podcast and that is the mic that they use. Because again, it doesn't matter how fancy or expensive your mic is, it's much more about the content. But if you wanted to go the next step above the Blue Yeti, there's also now Sure has a USB mic that you can consider as a comparable to Blue Yeti, but it's a little bit more expensive. But the sort of industry standard mic is the Shure SM7B. The mic that you may see in a lot of professional podcasts is probably that mic. It's the one that I have eventually now upgraded to use myself, but um, you would want a mic for every single person who's on there. So uh, if it's not just yourself on the mic, it can start to add up really quickly. It can get into the thousands of dollars just for the mics if you wanna go down that route. Because you don't just need the mic, you need to get an interface that has the mics talking to your computer, taking an analog uh, audio and moving it into digital. And you also need cords and you need, you know, switchers if you're starting to get multiple mics. It starts to get really complicated. So I would say when you're starting out, don't worry too much about the gear. You want to get a mic that's a minimum viable product, the minimum that you can get a decent sound captured of yourself and others. And then, of course, if your podcast grows, if you start to discover that you like it, if you start to build an audience, then you might want to invest in upgrading your content and your 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 materials and your tools that you're using. I'm gonna link all of this down in the show notes, of course, so you can check out all the mics and all the things that I would recommend that we're talking about in this podcast. My next tip for podcasting is with sustainability in mind. I want you to think, strategically in with the end in mind before you start. And that is, I want you to consider doing seasons of a podcast instead of an endless stream of episodes. So some people start a podcast and say, we're gonna post every week, or we're gonna post every other week, or we're gonna post every month. But of course, life happens, busyness happens, and they start to drop off. And if you've started to drop off for a few weeks or a few times you promised to post, then often people end up giving up completely. I don't want you to be one of those people. I don't want you to be the stat of all of these people who are the, you know, the 36% of podcasts are, are the ones that get past 10 episodes, but everybody else has not made it that far. I want you to make it that far. And so if you consider seasons, 
here's a few things that it can do for you. One, you can actually have a condensed focus period of your own energy to record, to create, to produce, to do interviews, to do the production side of things. But also you can take breaks in between so that you don't feel exhausted and burnt out by having to produce and churn something out every single week of the year or every month or whatever you've agreed to and didn't know what you were agreeing to when you didn't realize how much work it would be. But also it allows you to focus on topics or uh, series ideas. You can have a whole season on a focus area and then on the next season you could focus on something else. I would recommend not going too far apart in your focus topics because then people don't know what they're coming back for in the next season. They, they're, they're getting to know you so they need some consistency acro across your different seasons. But if you can think in seasons it's going to allow you to have those breaks to, uh, to actually be sustainable and to focus in for intense periods of time rather than permanently. I also think that it's always a great idea no matter whether you do seasons or weekly podcasts to think about how you're going to do it in chunks and batches. So trying to block out a day of the month or a day of the week that you're focusing in on podcasting will allow you to do a lot of interviews all at once when you've already got all your audio and video stuff set up rather than having to uh, set it up, tear it down every single time that you're doing it. If you can film and record in batches or think in series and segments of time, I think you're going to be more sustainable in the long run and break that statistic and become the top 36% of podcasts. The last tip I have for you about podcast for today is now you've got a podcast, you're out there, you've got your mic set up, you've figured out how to record, you've got your interviews going, you've blocked out time. Now it's time to grow your podcast. There's lots of ways you can grow your podcast and maybe if you're interested, let me know in the comments and we could do a whole video about how to grow your podcast and how to reach audiences uh, that you maybe aren't reaching right now. But you wanna think about posting on social media. You want to think about ratings and reviews and inviting those from people who are listening to your podcast because that will be a way that more people through the algorithm are going to find your podcast. You also want to think about going on other people's podcasts. That's a great way for people to know about you as a podcaster or your podcast as a church is if you're going on other churches and other leadership podcasts. It's a way of sort of a symbiotic relationship of people start to find each other when they realize you have like-minded content. There's lots of other things we could talk about with growth, like um, how to be targeted in the Facebook communication you're doing and the Facebook ads or the Facebook groups or whatever it is that you're doing online, Instagram, wherever, wherever it is that you're trying to reach people. But the most important thing is to be consistent and that will bring people back over and over. If you show up regularly, your people are gonna show up regularly. If you produce consistently interesting and dynamic content, people are gonna share it, gonna tell their friends, gonna rate and review, and gonna keep coming back for more. Speaking of coming back for more, I wanna talk to you about what I've been coming back more and more to with the Canadian Bible Society. If you go to biblesociety.ca, you're gonna find all kinds of resources and tools for you personally, for your small group Bible studies, for you as a leader to be equipped, for evangelism and discipleship, for your own growth, but also how to share scripture with other people. They have these daily Bible reading plans that I have found really rich and rewarding. And uh, if you go on their website or check out their tools online, they might have something that you'll really connect with as well. I, they have something for everybody, really. If you're looking for something of encouragement, you're looking for comfort, looking for growth and teaching on a specific area, check out their resources because you're gonna keep coming back for more because they just have so many tools. I mean, doing it long before digital, they're doing it long after they have something for you at biblesociety.ca.